Mohammad Nagib, the first president of Egypt. He was the primary leader of the Egyptian revolution of 1952, which ended the rule of the Muhammad Ali dynasty in Egypt and Sudan. On 23rd of July 1952, the free officers commenced the Egyptian revolution of 1952 with a coup d'etat to depose King Farouk. Naguib was appointed first as commander-in-chief of army in order to keep the armed forces firmly behind the junior officers' coup. Naguib was at the forefront of the Free Officers' Movement, lending it legitimacy in the eyes of the people, the army, politicians and foreign powers. Within 24 hours of the beginning of the revolution, the newly formed Revolution Command Council, RCC, had asserted the movement's peaceful intentions with Naguib as its leader. Naguib was a familiar name at the time, and like those of the other free officers who were too young and too junior in rank to have made a name for themselves. On 24th of July, Naguib met former Prime Minister Ali Meher to ask him to form a government and communicate the revolutionary's demands to the king at that time in Alexandria. On the 25th of July, Naguib led a group of RCC members to Alexandria to supervise the ousting of the king, the RCC at the time being divided over what Farouk's fate should be. Some wanted him to be put on trial, while others wanted him to abdicate and be sent into exile. Naguib supported exile and after a vote, it was agreed that Farouk should abdicate in favor of his infant son, Ahmed Fouad, who became King Fouad II and should then be exiled.
On the 26th of July, Naguib arrived to say his farewells to the former king, arriving late and catching up with Farouk Bybolt a few minutes after Farouk had set sail. After an awkward silence on the deck of the royal yacht Al Mahrousa, Naguib reminded Farouk that until the 1942 standoff with the British, the army had been loyal to the monarchy, but things had changed since then. Naguib said, Sir, we were forced to do what we did, to which Farouk replied, Yes, I know, your mission is a difficult one. As you know, governing Egypt is not an easy task. Naguib later stated, I could not feel joy for his defeat. The succession of Fuad II was designed to deny the British a pretext for intervention, allowing the revolutionaries to maintain that they were opposed only to the corrupt regime of Farouk, not to the monarchy itself. However, after consolidating their power, they quickly moved to implement their long-held plans for abolishing the monarchy and the aristocracy. Ali Meher's government resigned on 17th of September 1952 and Naguib was appointed Prime Minister. On 18th of June 1953, almost 11 months after the revolution, Naguib declared the end of the Egyptian and Sudanese monarchy and the establishment of the Republic of Egypt.
وصلنا اليه متمنيا ان يسدد الله خطانا لنحصل على كل ما نتمنى والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله اقسم بالله العظيم والبحر والجوي داخل وخارج وادي النيل معاديا من يعادي وطني مسالما من يسالمه محافظا على سلاحي لا اتركه من يدي قط حتى اذوق الموت والله على ما اقول وكيل سلام رئيس الجمهوريه سلام سلام Declaration of the Republic, Nagib was sworn in as its president. At this time, Nagib had become simultaneously the president, the prime minister, and chairperson of the RCC, forming a government mostly composed of army officers. Nasser became Deputy Prime Minister and it was already apparent that he had a strong grip on domestic affairs, as he served under Naguib as Minister of Interior. However, Naguib remained the most senior officer in the government and the national leader of the country and of the RCC, even though a struggle for power was brewing. Naguib began to clash with other RCC members over how the revolution's goals should be implemented. He wanted to phase out the political influence of the military and return the country to civilian rule, believing that the role of the military was not to rule the country, but rather to protect those in power. The army, he thought, could interfere to change a corrupt regime, but then it should withdraw. As Naguib wrote later in his book, Egypt's Fate, at the age of 36, Abdel Nasser felt that we could ignore Egyptian public opinion until we had reached our goals. But with the caution of a 53-year-old, I believed that we needed grassroots support for our policies, even if it meant postponing some of our goals. I differed with the younger officers on the means by which to reach our goals never on the principles. Nasser, by contrast, thought that any talk of democracy or of a multi-party system or of the withdrawal of the army from politics would allow the WEFT and the other political parties to regain the ground they had lost in 1952. In addition, although on paper Najib appeared to wield a lot of power, being simultaneously president and prime minister, 
His authority was curtailed by the fact that he needed a majority vote of the RCC for any decision to be taken and his opinion was often ignored by other members of the RCC. The offices he occupied meant that Naguib was responsible for the government's decisions, even though he rarely sanctioned or supported them. Eventually, Naguib gave Nasser, by now the real power in the RCC, an ultimatum. Either he was given real power or he would resign. Nasser accused Naguib of supporting the recently outlawed Muslim Brotherhood and of harboring dictatorial ambitions. On 25th of February 1954, the RCC announced Naguib's resignation as president, saying that Naguib was demanding absolute authority, which is not acceptable. Street protesters brought Naguib back to power the next day, but despite mass support and his reappointment, Naguib's days in power were numbered. Nasser now became Prime Minister and RCC Chairman, Naguib's office therefore becoming largely ceremonial. Following his forced resignation, Naguib was then isolated by Nasser in a suburban Cairo villa owned by Zainab al-Wakil, wife of Mustafa Nahis Pasha, ex-Prime Minister of Egypt. Naguib was released from his isolation in 1972 by President Anwar Sadat. On August 28, 1984, he died at the age of 83 and had a military funeral that was attended by the head of state then, President Hosni Mubarak. In December 2013, interim Egyptian President Adli Mansour awarded the Order of the Nile, the high state honor, to the name of the late President Mohammed Naguib. His grandson, Mohammed Yusuf Mohammed Naguib, received the state honor award.
July 22, 2017, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi inaugurated the Mohammed Nagib military base located in Hammam area west of Alexandria. This military base will have a permanent museum commemorating President Mohammed Nagib, the first president of the Republic of Egypt.